It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman, and this show is brought to you by EmailRevealer.com. You can go to EmailRevealer.com, get an autographed copy of my book, How to Become a Successful Private Investigator. Uh, also, too, all different kinds of services. One thing I'm going to be talking about later on tonight is a, a runaway kid, missing persons, and runaway kid investigations. Uh, if, if you, you, There's no order form for that on the website. You just have to contact me directly in the and talk to me about it. We'll arrange a consultation. We'll come up with a plan. Uh, but that, that's one of my specialties for sure. I was just written about in a book, uh, Finding Missing People. I, I forget what the name of the book is, but I was just written about in this book. <laughs> I'll be talking about it late tonight. Also, too, okay, hacked email account investigations. If you think somebody's reading your emails, I can investigate that. Harassing telephone investigations. I invented something with that where I can uh, create a trap line for you. you. Pass your calls through my trap line. We can unblock caller ID block and, and unblock uh, unknown callers. All kinds of fun stuff over there at emailrevealer.com. Okay, we have, I guess, a returning guest, <laughs> our guest from, the, uh, from the Europe, uh, Patrick, uh, who's the director and producer behind Program to Kill Satanic Cover-Up, uh, which you can find on YouTube. It's like an 80-episode uh, YouTube documentary that's in installments. It's like 80 different ones. Uh, surrounding all the famous serial killing cases and, and other public cases. Uh, uh, let's just introduce Patrick and get into this. Uh, Patrick, are you there? Yes, thank you for having me, Ed. Having your back, you mean, because we did this before. <laughs> and I, we, I, Oh, man, I, I this, the recording didn't save, and Patrick was nice enough to come back. Uh, so thank you so much, brother. Uh, tell us about yourself. Well, my name is Patrick. I'm now 20 years, uh, 29 years old. And uh, when I was 15 years old, I started to uh, become fascinated with the topic of serial killers. And I did a lot of research. Uh, it was the early stages of YouTube. So I saw a lot of documentaries, uh, movies, uh, read uh, magazines, books, everything. And I think five years later, I also become aware of uh, the conspiracy uh, arena about 9-11, chemtrails and the mind control. And just by sheer chance, I found the book uh, Program to Kill by author Dave McGowan in a bookstore and took it home with me. And I really thought it was just another serial killer book. But the uh, information that uh, McGowan provides really uh, came to the conclusion that all those serial killers have military connections, uh, mind control connections, uh, intelligence agencies, uh, the occult, Satanism and secret societies. And those are the topics we're going to discuss this evening. Military mind control, Satanism, secret societies, and also uh, biker gangs. Yes, also, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Now, last time we did this, we started, I guess, with Paul Bernardo and uh, Bundy and uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, which I think are, are, are three major cases that, that are indicative of the cover-up of the Satanism behind the scenes. Uh, but I'd like to start this time, and we'll get into those, uh, with the, the case of Carrie Stainer and the Stephen Stainer uh, up in uh, northern uh, Yosemite uh, National Park in the United States. You're familiar with that case, right? Yes, I've listened to your various podcast, which very much information, very uh, good information. Yeah. And now, what can you describe that case for us? It's starting with Stephen uh, Stainer, the, the little boy that was abducted, supposedly. Uh, yeah, maybe you can give uh, give uh, the few listeners in the synopsis. I only know the uh, okay. information McGowan provides in his book. Well, we've done a couple of shows on this. One with uh, uh, Stephen Sinzeri, who was a bail bondsman, who bailed out one of the characters involved in all this, this scenario here. And then also, too, with a, a woman named Dunn, who actually was targeted by these same kidnappers and serial killers up there at Yosemite Park. But the story starts out with Stephen Stainer. Uh, the little boy, Stephen, who was lured into a car by these adult pedophiles and kept with them for about 10 years. 
until they went to take another kid and Stephen took the other kid to the police department. Somehow Stephen was returned home, uh, but he was allowed to, because he had, he was closer to his abductors than he was to his own family. And there's even some allegations that he was allowed to talk to his abductors during the time he was returned back to his home. And there's even some allegations too, that he was actually given by the parents to his abductors. There's a lot of shady business going on there with that. But what happens is his older brother, Kerry Stanner, goes to work at Yosemite Park and gets arrested for a, a series of serial killings, I mean, serial murders. And uh, it, he also, St uh, the other brother, the other brother, uh, Stephen, uh, Kerry Stanner claims he was being molested by his uncle at the same time Stephen was being kidnapped. And, that, and then also, too, his uncle turns up dead in an apartment that they were sharing due to a shotgun wound. <laughs> okay, is that enough? <laughs> you know what I mean? What more yeah. do you need? <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of hidden connections in the Stainer family, apparently. I think uh, they used uh, the sons uh, for scapegoats in the end, for, uh, especially Gary Stainer. And uh, really, if you investigate this case, you really come to the conclusion that there are uh, multiple accomplices uh, inv directly involved in this case, which were all connected to uh, drug trafficking. But uh, in the end, uh, the only uh, person that was convicted was Gary Stanger. Who actually confessed. And that's a common uh, th thing that goes on in this whole situation, too. That's a common to the pattern, right? That the guy who they catch confesses and, and doesn't implicate others. Yes. And even the last killing, uh, he was uh, sworn by the FBI and uh, prosecutors that he will never confess to the ultimate motive about that about that killing so he never he took a took the secret to his grave why he allegedly killed someone and yeah that's right it's part of his deal he's not allowed to talk about it yeah what do you make of that that aspect that uh, with, with a lot of these cases they go to their grave without implicating anybody else officially but but they do talk about it in their confessions and different things they, they do mention other people who were involved um, what do you make of that yeah, I really think it's a case of uh, police corruption and coercion and blackmail. I think uh, there was a lot of drug trafficking in Yosemite Park. Yeah. And probably, probably law enforcement was also uh, involved in that. And uh, they took a firm uh, choice to uh, prosecute only one guy and uh, not the whole group because uh, there goes the money. Very true, because prior to this uh, this murder, uh, Carrie had an arrest for marijuana. He had a, a couple of minor, it might have been meth too, but he had a couple of minor arrests that they just dropped the charges and let him go. So again, hey, what about informants? Do you find that a lot of these other cases that people involved were police informants? Yes, uh, Fred and Rose West in England were uh, police informants, and also allegedly Paul Bernardo, of, yeah, reportedly, so... And a few others I can't, at the top of my head, I can't remember. Well, describe the, the West case. What, which one was that? Yeah, that's a very weird case. It was in the uh, 1970s in uh, Gloucester, Gloucester uh, England. And uh, Fred and Rose West uh, had a whole apartment building for themselves with their children. And they were uh, lodging uh, rooms there for lodgers. And basically, they were uh, sexually assaulting, torturing and uh, prostituting his wife for various lodgers and uh, people who were living there in the street. And they uh, continued to do that for, I think, almost uh, two decades. And there was also co police complicity because there were also policemen going to uh, the house like a brothel, so. Right, and, and, they, and they, again, too, another thing you left out in your, your pattern here you were describing of that military mind control, Satanism, secret societies, is also snuff films. There's always, there are always videotaping involved in these things, too, right? Yeah, definitely, yeah. I think almost practically every serial killer case, uh, all, all, even with uh, in Las Vegas, that guy was uh, videotaping himself. So I don't know for which, uh, uh, for which case. Uh, many people say it's like trophies. They like to... Uh, see the self and the reliving the crime but i think it's more a uh, sinister type of connection that there are people in government you, you know the high uh, the elites the secret societies uh, get off on that and uh, want to make uh, money uh, from those videotapes yeah uh, actually in vegas here um he was he had a camera pointed to himself but they're, they're claiming that there was no recording that he wasn't recording himself that uh, but he had they did saying he had a lot of electronic equipment too in the hallways uh, uh, monitoring what was going on in the hallways, but but they, they're claiming no recording. So, but who knows? 
Uh, that story's changed so many times. Now, it, it goes back again to this, this business about the recording. with Because in Abu Ghraib, right, uh, over there where they were torturing the prisoners, uh, they were recording them over there too. And, and there's an allegation that they were sending those recordings to the White House and Dick Cheney was watching those recordings every night. And, and, and there's also allegations that uh, they would, you know, take a suspect from his home and bring him to the prison and then go and kidnap the guy's wife and kids and rape the wife and kids in front of the, the guy they were interrogating, now, which goes back to the Phoenix program. Now, now how many uh, describe what the Phoenix program was and uh, some of these serial killers who come out of the Phoenix program? Uh, could you please describe the Phoenix program? Because you have better English and I can uh, <laughs> direct the serial killers to them. <laughs> okay. okay. What is your first language? It's uh, Belgium. Belgium. Okay. I like the waffles, right? I love your waffles over there. <laughs> okay. Have you heard of Belgian waffles? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> but I, I always got to make a little joke. Someone says they're from Turkey. I say, well, I love your sandwiches. Okay. Um, the Phoenix program. Okay, and I had uh, Doug Valentine on the show who wrote the original book and he had access to uh, the CIA director and stuff like that. It's basically in Vietnam, it was a secret program where they would, again, get tips about people who were uh, North Korean uh, Viet Cong sympathizers and they would go and kidnap them, take them to these places and torture them. And they would go to villages and towns and stuff like that and, and find people who they suspected were sympathizers and cut their heads off and put them on sticks. Uh, and this grew into uh, an extortion racket where if someone didn't like a competing businessman, they would go and rat them out. And the, the U.S. government, uh, thugs and goons like they were, would go in and, and eliminate business adversaries, drug rivals, and criminal gang rivals. Uh, and, <laughs> and this... This is what it turned into, and it doesn't seem like it's ever stopped. This is an active program because they continue to Abu Ghraib, the same exact thing. So give us an idea of some of the serial killers who came out of that program. Yeah, for the people who have read uh, Program to Kill uh, by Dave McGowan, uh, he actually said that the Phoenix pro program was brought home to America because a lot of these guys who were in the jungle were coming back uh, to America and we're doing ex the exact same thing that we're doing in Vietnam. You have the case of the Genesee River killer, Arthur Shawcross, which actually uh, demonstrated that he had a surgical intervention in his brains, that, he, that they literally were uh, doing uh, surgical procedures to make him uh, like uh, the son of Uncle Sam. You have also uh, the uncle of uh, Richard Ramirez, who uh, took uh, Polaroid photographs and uh, show them to Richard Ramirez like what he had done to those people in the jungle. Uh, you have uh, the Sunset Slayer, uh, Jack uh, Jack Murray, who was befriended with Douglas Clark, the alleged uh, perpetrator. He was also in a Phoenix uh, operative. Uh, so you have yeah, many uh, cases in that. Well, describe, uh, let's start with Shawcroft. Describe his crimes and what he would do, because he was doing the same thing when he came back, the, putting heads on sticks. Yes, exactly. Uh, he was, uh, yeah, he was going to the, I think it was the Seattle Strip, and he was going to pr uh, visit prostitutes, and to his uh, his comments were that he uh, was uh, paranoid that they were giving them AIDS and other customers, clients, and he would uh, take their lives. But uh, if you research those killings, it really looked like uh, occult rituals, like... Uh, it had, it, it had more than uh, the most likely killing with strangulation and just uh, stabbing or beating someone to death. So it had an uh, occult ritual attached to it, I think. Now, that's interesting, too. The, the, another common denominator in this is many of the targets, the victims, are usually prostitutes. Now, do you think that's just because they're on the fringe, they're, they're weak, no one's looking for them? Or, or could it possibly be that they're involved in blackmail rings? Because there's a lot of blackmail in prostitution and escort services. Yes, that's a very good statement. I really think it's the the latter, last one, yeah. I really think that some of those girls were uh, seen with people who uh, uh, were not uh, uh, happy about that and uh, were uh, forced into prostitution and into uh, uh, blackmail, blackmailing and eventually death, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a, a huge... And people have no idea how much uh, blackmailing goes on with escort services. Even the average person will go to an escort 